The language is very important here. It's not that you can learn, you can learn physics in whatever language, in all of the sciences of this world. But the, the Hebrew language and the Kabbalah, the spiritual vessels, lights, actions, it, it's the same thing, meaning they're the same thing. When you read a word, you're not reading a word. You're moving from kli to kli to kli because the letters are replaced. Uh, you move from letter to letter and that way you discover the Creator. And every letter is a sign, an indication, and every word is sort of a pattern. It's like a code. You have these secret codes, right? Or uh, all these, how do you call them? Hackers? Not hackers. No, I mean uh, people who... Programmers. Okay, no, I meant... Codes. <laughs> to summarize, codes, uh, some encryption. But here there are special codes because every word, every pattern, every the order of the words, every root of a word in Hebrew, it all stems from the relation between lights and vessels. That's where the language comes from. It doesn't come from earthly kind of agreement and usage. No, it came, you could say it came straight down from the heavens because of the relations of the lights and the vessels. And the more we know it, the more we can penetrate deeper into the, the connection between light and kli, to feel the, the flavor of, to feel why, why it is so. I guess from above it's planned that I'll personally lack it, but I feel a great harmony in it and an inner kind of connection between the forces of nature which is performed by the presentation of the letters. And so I'm not talking about uh, such lofty things, and I'm not talking about the language itself, or, which we learn in school, for example. I remember hearing once an explanation from her that she teaches something close to the source texts, and I think that it's worthwhile. I think it's worthwhile. The main thing is that it helps you understand the interpretation of the words, because sometimes we say a few words, and if you translate them to English, for example, or any other language, for that matter, you lose, you lose the essence of the explanation of the word itself, what it actually means. And translated, it may you'll see in a very exterior aspect of it, perhaps, of the, the action which it describes. But in Hebrew, if we know the, the word, that word provides you with the content of the kli, how it's interconnected with other uh, vessels, with the light, the type of feeling, nekudot and so on. We know it from the tanta, where all these things come from, how these discernments begin to be discovered. And so, again, because we have 22 letters and uh, 9, 9 and 4, 9, uh, 9 is Bina, 9 is Ampin and 4, Malchut and the Manzapach letters, the five which, uh, five letters which stand at the Palsa 
and the Nekudot. We learned a bit about the Nekudot right now, which are the departure of the lights which create the Nekudot. The Nekudot are the Kelim, and they, are, they disappear. We don't use them so much. We only intend for them. We don't learn of these signs which these marks which it's very important though language it, it can open the wisdom up for you completely if we knew the inner meaning of the word and the order of the words and letters that's everything in a nutshell you don't have anything else it's the revelation of the creator to the created being that's how it comes how it comes about 